There he is, Mr. Murphy. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> he opened it. No, Murphy! <laughs> hey guys, my name is Cesar Milan and today Maluma and Rio and myself, we are going to see a video about a golden doodle that is pretty much taking over the house. Like your classic hyperactive behavior. Not aggression, not fear, not anxiety, but believe it or not, this is one of the cases that I see the most and is completely encouraged by the owners by giving affection, 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 affection. 911 emergency comes from an unusual caller, another All dog right, trainer. Eldon oh, McIntyre look at me with that Subaru. His limits, attempting to train an 80 pound golden doodle. 80 pound named golden doodle. Caesar's meeting Murphy. Eldon at the dog owner's home to get the full I remember picture. this one. Mr. It's Eldon. very, very yeah, nice no to idea. Eldon. I'm glad I am to see you. Oh. Eldon, if you're watching you? this, man, good, good, thank good. you so nice much. Nice to meet you. I'm a you're dog a good trainer man. who's been working with you have no ego. Murphy, the golden doodle with no the Butcher family. Oh. So, if I need help, I call people. No, Murphy! He's got a fantastic family and they yeah. love their dog. Yeah. He goes from super pet to Dennis the Menace. Uh, super pet to Dennis the Menace. I love that. Dennis the Menace, I remember. Dennis the Menace was a little kid that was you know, she deals Error. with it more than most. Leave it. Probably one of the more interesting things that he picked up on from very young was building for, building for open doors. And Murphy got a lot of access to areas. Listen, Murphy will, should be in the movies. So when a dog is mischievous, when a dog is, is amazing at opening things and figuring things out, what, what is, he's a happy-go-lucky guy. He's uh, middle of the pack. Uh, he gets overstimulated and he's allowed to go do pretty much whatever whatever he wants and people celebrate it people laugh about it so when you have a dog like Murphy the best thing you can do is get him into search and rescue get him into agility get him into tricks to them life is fun you know so even if they're grabbing socks or if they're grabbing shoes and they're grabbing underwears and they're grabbing pretty much whatever in their in their mind is their job with a lot of fun. They're super fun. They're super, super fun. You know, has nothing to do with the breed, so don't think that all Labradoodles are going to behave this way. Absolutely nothing. It, this is have to do with a dog that is middle of the pack. We had no rules, bounds, limitations. They had the dog for approximately five months, and then they gave me a call and brought me in to work with Murphy. Good boy, Murphy, stay. Okay. Stay. Stop. Oh, man. And it's become so difficult to work with Murphy. And I don't really have Caesar's background and what he brings could change the whole dynamic of the family. No. Caesar's intervention at this point in time is extremely important because one of Murphy's biggest problems is his affinity to, to, to take things and swallow things. No. Is no. something that's really got to be correct. Oh. Every time he ingests a sock. He's got a sock. He's at great risk. Uh. Could end I have a good friend, his name is Dr. Garcia, Rick Garcia. Do you guys know how much socks he gets out of dog's stomachs? So many, so many socks, it's just ridiculous. How many socks my friend, Rick Garcia from Paws and Claws has removed from dog's stomachs? To assess the risk to the dog and to get an insight in how the family interacts with Murphy, Caesar asks Eldon to carry a wireless camera into the house. It's good to work with a pro. You know, uh, assessment is, is extremely important. Why assessment is so important? Because it allows you to see what's happening, you know, firsthand. One thing is, you know, the owners of a dog telling you this is the problem, and then uh, and Eldon telling me this is the problem. And then it's when you are right there at the moment you open the door, you hear the sound. Um, you know, how people move, how people talk, all of that is going to, is going to influence how I'm going to create the strategy to help that family. Because they're not paying attention to the little things, you know. As, as a Virgo, I like to pay attention to every single little details. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, because I get to see all the wrong things, even if they're this little, right? But at the same time, in the animal world, that has helped me to help them, because in, the, in their world, everything matters. So even the little things have a big meaning. So to do an assessment and evaluation is, is really, really, it's the beginning of everything. It's like an x-ray. That will send him a live view of Murphy and the family. Right, let's get to see this guy in action. Uh, hey, little kid. Who's the dog? There he is, Mr. Murphy. Wow. Oh, 
my god. <laughs> Open it. No, Murphy! <laughs> you know, if you see my expression on the face, you're like, oh my god. Like, I really, genuinely, I love how clever animals are. You know, I've seen cats knocking on the door, grabbing, like, things that humans will grab, right? How did the dog learn to open doors? This is not part of their nature. There is no door, doors in mother nature, but as you can see, they watch you and they see how you open it, even with the, the strength of, of the push of the door, how she does it. It's just incredible. I was genuinely surprised in a good way. Go ahead. <laughs> No, just, no. Everybody can see outside, outside themselves. Everybody can be a dog whisperer. Everybody can be a dog trainer. Everybody can be a assessment and evaluation expert outside, meaning you can see everybody's error and you can see everybody's fault and you can see everybody where, what they should do right, what they should do wrong. Everybody, everybody's really good at it. The key is the people don't see it. You know, so when they, when people see a dog moving fast, they actually move fast with the dog, which is the opposite. What I love about it is the whole family is trying to help them, right? Trying to, trying to pitch in, but they're all moving at the same time. So, so they're all moving super fast. So the dog said, well, they don't try to stop me. They try to play with me. And then what he sees is, what is what the human seeing that he's chasing me? And then if it's chips in there, they say, the human is looking at the chips. I'm going to grab the chips. If it's a bra or if it's an underwear or if it's a shoe, and if you look at it, they're going to look at you at the moment you look at the object and it's, ah, you want that. Remember, the dog interpret this as you're playing with them, right? So it's not going to stop. It's not going to slow down because you're imitating his energy and he's just playing. He's just playing. That's all he's doing. No, just no. Oh my God, that's so bad. It's gonna be very easy to stop Murphy, but it's not gonna be very easy to stop the family. Oh, no. Yes, I know you wanna play. See, and the funny part is, is she knew, she knew the, uh, the mom, she knew, I know you wanna play, right? So it's like, they're, they're aware that Murphy wants to play. What they're not aware is how they're trying to stop him. Right, so it's an urgency, it's, it's excitement, it's, it's, it's worriness because he can grab something that he can choke himself with, right? So I understand the underneath worriness and cautiousness, but at the same time, if you are worried, if you are cautious, if you are afraid, that is an energy of fear. So that's going to make Murphy not being able to stop. On top of that, people are behaving excited. So it's a few layers. So if you watch this video, you, you can see the few layers of what the human is, the energy the human is using to talk, to stop a behavior of running around. That's pretty much it. That was a comedy show. Uh, Caesar! <laughs> that was a comedy show, I said. Caesar received a 911 call from a fellow dog trainer. Eldon McIntyre, who is concerned about the Plocker family's 80-pound, hyperactive golden doodle, Murphy. Her, no, leave it. And his dangerous habit of swallowing items around the house. It's got a sock. After watching the dog create chaos, Caesar has seen enough. That was a comedy show. <gasps> Caesar! Oh. That was hilarious. Hilarious. Beautiful. Oh. We're Matt and Justine, and we live in La Cañada, California. Yeah, we Cañada moved from St. Louis to La Cañada. We brought with us a little dog, Kissy, and she died way too early from intestinal cancer. Mm. So soon after she passed, I started looking for breeds that are good for a family, and so I looked online and. Um, just for the record, if your dog passed away, somebody passed away. Just finish, finish your finish morning, finish your pain, finish all of that. Um, they can feel it. They don't know why you're sad, but they can feel your sadness. They can feel your pain. Um, so make sure you you're good to yourself. Make sure you're finished. Make, make sure you honor yourself, your pain. 
Make sure there's no more pain left before you get a new dog. Um, very, very important for the new dog. They don't know what happened. Just grab the good memories, grab the good knowledge, grab the uh, love you had for dogs, you know, and never, never, ever, ever try to make uh, another dog the same as the other one. Just enjoy them as how they are. It's like me trying to do another daddy. Now, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I am, I am absolutely happy that I, I got to meet daddy. So, just for the record, because you know, her sadness can definitely create uh, the behavior that, that Murphy is having right now. And Matthew picked out the one he wanted, <laughs> and it was Murphy. Murphy was one of the calmest dogs in the bunch and one of the biggest. We thought, well, what a great combination. Gosh, Murphy's going to be perfect. And, and then we brought and him was perfect. And things kind of started to escalate. No. Murphy, off, off, off. Leave it. Leave it. Murphy, no. Murphy's energy level is at least a 10. It's either a 10 or he's sleeping. He destroys goggles. He destroys the kids' toys. No, not Carrie. I will not let you eat Carrie. We can't play in the backyard because he'll just take the ball and run off. Drop it! It just frustrates me. It's Aww. never been cute or funny. It's just been super irritating. <gasps> Matthew, get Claudia. it out. Claudia, don't say that. Don't. Here. Worst case scenario is if he would ingest something. Don't swallow this up. Don't swallow this up. Murphy's consumed at least four socks. No, eight. Eight, eight socks. socks that we know wow. of. Consumed where they went in and came out, thank oh, goodness. Thank goodness. I've called the vet every time he's ingested something and they're like, well, you're just gonna have to follow him around and make sure it comes out. Oh. Just worried he's gonna choke or he's not gonna stop breathing. I've got it pried open. An eight job. And he might die from it. I like eating my stuffed animals and my socks. That's a real fear of mine to lose another dog. You know, it's really sad to hear because he's already concerned about his dog dying from his toys, from his socks. Something that's his, his dog can die from, you know. So that's, I forgot about that part. But obviously that, that's, that didn't happen, so don't worry about it. I like eating my stuffed animals and my socks. That's a real fear of mine to lose another dog. And I, and I just, I, I don't think I would ever be able to give him up, but I always am second guessing myself, like, well, is this a good scenario for anyone? Like the deep, natural, simple, profound, the profound reason that, you know, what makes a dog not listen to someone who loves him so much? Well, she has mentioned it. Um, I feel like my previous dog passed away too soon. So she's not complete, she's, it's, it's just not in agreement with it. And that, you know, you hold pain, you hold pain, right? And then second guessing herself that I did the right thing. That goes after your confidence. So I just want you to, to, to think about how she's talking in case that you're talking the same, right? Because how you talk is, about the situation is pretty much how you feel about yourself. So when I come to people's home, it's like I hear them how they talk, you know, how they perceive things, how they do things. So just be careful how, how you say things because it's going to affect your calmness, your confidence, your love, and your joy. We need something more because it's not working. Murphy seems to defy, defy us intentionally. So now we just have to put him in his crate, and he's barking, he wants to play. I feel bad for him, but we can't let him lose. He has no freedom. Um, he's in a crate constantly for his safety. So it just kind of sucks. Murphy doesn't deserve a life like this, and we really want to have him just be a part of our family. All right, so what does he normally go after? I mean, he just grabbed a strawberry. He didn't like that, so... Oh, he's got it again. This dog is grabbing anything he can and taking off with it. He's got a sock right now. Here, Murphy. That shows me that he has no boundaries in the house. He's got a sock right now. Oh, God. Here, Murphy. That shows me that he has no boundaries in the house. Bread. So the, that's the technique, right? To start going after you're teaching the dog rules, bind limitations, so people start believing in themselves. Because I'm a stranger. I know I am Cesar Milan, blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, to Murphy, I'm not Cesar Milan. I'm just a stranger. 
right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna say things. I'm gonna start saying things. But my the most important part is how do I help you with your comp confidence so you can set rules by limitations? That's the key. Oh gosh. What do you get? Bread. Shh. Yeah, spit it out. Shh. There you go. Spit it out. Spit it out. Hold piece of bread. Hey. There you go. See, the brain has to move away. Okay. I'm moving. I'm going in with the right intention just to block him from running away from me. Right? So I'm claiming my space and I'm moving into his space. Then I'm, try I'm asking him, connect to your instincts so you can hear me. Connect to your instincts so you, so you can see what they want. So now you can teach the concept to leave it. Yeah. There you go. Look. This dog thinks everything in the house is his. Yeah. So when you take a when you take an object, whatever object is, don't just grab don't just grab it and and pull it away because they're gonna chase it, and they and, and their brain they never actually give it to you, right? You pull it away. So if you watch that moment. It's not just when I went and grabbed the bread. And it's, it's it, it, just watch the whole ritual. The whole ritual, me coming in, me blocking him, me asking for the bread, grabbing the bread, pr providing that energy, you know, as I hold the bread. Then the brain does this. So I'm triggering, spit it out. Because what they do is they grab and they go and, and pull it out. So the dog is never voluntarily giving it to you. And then I'm waiting for the dog to practice avoidance or move away. That's the dog saying, okay, you want the bread and you don't want me to look at it. And you don't want me to ever look at it. I say, yep, that's exactly what I want. Bread is off limits unless I give it to you. Strawberries are off limits unless I give it to you. Socks are off limits unless I need you to carry them. By blocking him from a piece of bread, I'm teaching him that some things in the house he can have whenever he wants. There you go. That's avoidance. Avoidance you good. Want avoidance well, yeah, because you want him to let go of the idea of eating it. But if you're moving things away, and then he's constantly chasing for it. So that's what they swallow socks. Yeah. This is a super awesome ABC 101 type of. How to, how to communicate with a hyper dog. You know, it's definitely more, more difficult when people have a fearful dog, when people have an aggressive dog. This is just a hyper dog. And I said, you, uh, see, that's avoidance. And he said, do you want avoidance? Yeah. You don't want forward, away from it, right? You, you do want avoidance. You want the dog not to look at the things he can die from, like a sock, right? In this case, it was a bread. He's not gonna die from a bread. But at this point, anything he touches, he needs to practice avoidance. So it's general, it's in general. You know, because he, he has no rules by limitations. So he needs to know that everything has rules by limitations. In order for him to recover, in order for him to get out of the cage, because as you, as you heard earlier, the only way we can deal with him is if we put him in the crate. And he has no freedom. So the only way you can have freedom, or a dog can have freedom, or we can have freedom, is if we follow the rules, bound the limitations. When we break the rules, bound the limitations, they put us into a crate. It's called jail, right? They take our freedom away. So, yes, right now we want him, everything he touches on his own, to practice avoidance. Eventually becomes his behavior, that's what he does. So he surrendered to be this way at all time. Just like we surrender to, to drive at a certain speed. Just like uh, right now we surrender to wear a mask. Right now we surrender to have social distance. So, so remember, surrendering is, is a, a behavior that we are adopting voluntarily. Okay? But right now, the best thing Murphy can do is to avoid. Fight, flight, avoidance, surrender. So avoidance is good. I don't even know what that was. Bread. But I'm, bread. It's bread. I'm not surprised that Murphy stole another piece of bread. 
One correction from me is not gonna be enough to stop him from stealing things. You block him over there, please? It's gonna take a lot of repetitions. It's gonna take a lot of follow through. This is an overexcited dog. Yep. And the family doesn't know how to address Murphy when he's in this hyperactive state correctly. This is not an aggressive case. This is a hyperactive dog yeah. that has no rules, boundaries, and limitations. So a lot of people give up very fast. And a lot of people think this is funny. He's yeah. running. I bet he's going to get in the kids' rooms right now. So I want to chase after him right now, no, no, but I'm stopping chase. myself. Justine's instincts to chase Murphy yeah. is exactly what escalates Murphy's excited behavior. Murphy? The kids' room's supposed to be off limits. Yeah, off limits. But Murphy learned that if he goes inside the room, Justine and the kids will chase him out of the room and it becomes this fun activity for him. Yep. He's controlling your household. He's leading your life. Yep. He's keeping you. I, I, you know, when Chuck E. Cheese was, was, uh, was still open, I used, to, I used to call these places Chuck E. Cheese. It's just literally Chuck E. Cheese. It's just the dog would dive anywhere. Like, I'm going to the kid's room. They're going to chase me. Yes, the fact that, you know, the mom is say, my instinct is to chase him. But it comes from, I don't want him to get hurt. That's what it comes from. I, I don't want him to, to, you know, swallow something. Kidnap. Right. Because you interpret discipline as a, as a mean thing. And it's kind of no fun. Guess what? There is no other way to get a well-behaved dog if he doesn't understand right. the rules, boundaries, and limitations. Okay. One of the biggest reasons for Murphy hyperactive. Wow, that that was I remember. So she's not only dealing with the fear of a dog dying, she's not only dealing with oh, so many things. She's also de uh, dealing with the fact that she interprets discipline as no fun. If a dog has discipline, and then he's not gonna have fun. But the kids have discipline. She's, she was definitely disciplined. The whole house was very disciplined. The, it was immaculate. The house was beautiful. Beautiful structure, clean. That was our house. That is discipline. So that's I always say about dog people. Like dog people can be, the, can be an astronaut. I work with astronauts and they have to be very disciplined. Dog people can be athletes. I work with athletes. But when it comes to the dog, the word discipline changes the perception. What the whole point of discipline is about. And I've, and she just said, this means no fun. Activity is the frantic behavior from Justine and the kids, which Murphy sees it as a reward for his excited behavior. Well, unconsciously, you have conditioned the brain that everything you do means excitement. Right. Yeah, every time you get chaotic, he's gonna get chaotic. It's like, it's hard for me not to have that energy whenever it's like, I just always go back to him and just saying socks and that kind of gets me frenzied. Justine is right to be worrying about the socks because it's definitely a very serious problem, but she's looking at it the wrong way. Yeah. Let's teach what the socks means. I wanted to show Justine that there's nothing particularly interesting about the sock. Shh. It could be just a sock, as long as Justine and the kids don't project any excited energy when he takes it. Right. So now you're claiming the sock okay. versus where's the, sock? where's the socks? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You go right. running after it. Right. You just gave the command to chase the sock. Well, I saw today that Murphy can be the kind of dog that we want. That's a good thing. It wasn't a huge surprise that I, I was part of the problem, if, mm -hmm. if not the problem. Okay, I'm just I'm just kind of disappointed in myself. Oh, brother. He's a good boy. Yeah, we, I, never, I always said it's not the dog, it's not the problem. As we humans have a problem the way we want to love them. And often, we do it in a very selfish way. And we don't even know it. You're going to take my makeup off, Murphy. <laughs> I definitely made Justine aware about her frantic energy around Murphy. But because Murphy is a hyperactive dog, he needs more than just calmness from the family to focus his mind. Okay, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed the video. Maluma, Rio, and myself, and all the dogs around here, we send you a lot of blessings, a lot of love, a lot of calmness, a lot of confidence, a lot of love and joy. And remember, it's always best to be proactive. So don't wait until the dog grabs the socks. Don't chase after the dog. Make sure you understand the rules, bounds, limitations. It's part of discipline, and it's part of how keep a dog balanced and connected to you. We love you. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and join me on my mission of better humans, better planet.